All right, you ready? Let's do it. The party getting started. The beats all night. All right, DTAP, uh, we held off as long as we could before we had you on here because we wanted to make people have a level of anticipation. Truth be <laughs> told, told me that we've been looking forward to this one. You're outside your house right now. Why? Because it's a circus inside my house. <laughs> my, my, my wife has uh, got everything going on. The kids woke up this morning. They started making muffins. Now they're doing their online classes. Uh, so it, between the kids and... The, the, the classes and the dog running around the house is a circus, but I'm loving it. Coach Fuente told me one time, he said, DTAP never has a bad day. Is that true even <laughs> in quarantine? No doubt. It, it's very rare. If, if, if I'm not smiling, something is horribly wrong, but it hasn't, man. I've been fortunate uh, from the time I was a young kid to even now, so I can't complain, and I'm just going with the punches. Like I said, you've got the grit background. you certainly become – a master of staging when it comes to videography <laughs> and tours and social media. How, how easy have you found your personality translating to this new era? It's been pretty cool. I think, I think really Twitter started dropping my last year in Seattle uh, and I got on it and, and figured out it's a useful tool um, and just kind of been going from there. But the technology aspect is something that's kind of kept me connected to uh, the young people now, like, and the way they see the world, the things they listen to, the how they talk. Uh, and I've been able to get right into it. So as I transition into coaching, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Like, I'm still a part of these, these guys' uh, current landscape, and it's just been fun getting along with it. So being back at Tech, I can truly speak from the heart about things that I, I feel and things that I like, and it's, it's picking up right on with the kids that we're recruiting. I remember DTAP, I was in a meeting at some point, like 2007, and somebody was telling me about Twitter. And I said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's not, <laughs> it's never going to work. <laughs> I thought for sure IG and Snapchat were both fads. Uh, I needed somebody like you around me to, to show me uh, the value in it. No, no doubt about it. But it's, it's been so cool to see. It's like when I say it was a tool when I was in Seattle, it was a way to connect the player to the fan. And ironically enough, you know, that's something that a lot of fans crave to see that athletes and now coaches are human beings. Like, I'm dealing with the exact same thing that you're dealing with. Uh, so it's been a pretty cool tool. And if you use it the right way, uh, it could open a lot of doors. Uh, and that's something that we, I'm really trying to focus on, helping the guys when I play in the league, the young guys coming into the league, helping out these kids now that are recruiting, or young men uh, that are recruiting that, you know, you got to use it for what it is uh, and, and, and don't abuse that situation because it'll really open a lot of doors for you moving forward. You've got a group of defensive linemen that remain that, that have had success, of course, but you've also got a heralded group coming in, some young, some old. What's, what's the approach right now between you and Bill and Ham in terms of uh, what you're trying to implement now, even though, like you were just mentioning, it is certainly unique circumstances? Right. So right now we're treating it just like an NFL offseason. In a normal NFL offseason, you're installing your defense probably three times before you even get to training camp. Uh, the only thing that's missing is the fact of on field, uh, being on field and working it. So what we're doing is using Zoom, uh, FaceTime, PowerPoint, crayon, message by pigeon, anything we can do <laughs> to get these guys to understand what we're doing. Now we understand it's a tough deal. They probably won't uh, understand fully what we're trying to do, especially with these guys trying to handle classes that are transitioned to online. Uh, but they're doing a phenomenal job handling the academics, and we're just kind of spoon-feeding them a lot of things so that when it comes up again, they can be like, oh, I remember y'all somewhat going over there, and it's not the first thing that they hear and kind of throws them back. Like, continue to give them stuff so they can start getting that thing soaked in, and then hopefully it'll kick in when we finally get on the field at some point. Tap, you come back to Blacksburg, universally the fan base was jacked up about that. And I had met you a couple of times before you came back and, and certainly could see why that was the case. I mean, you, got all, you played for Coach Beamer. You played for Bud Foster. You played with Justin Hamilton. How has this all transpired for you, and, and what's the last year been like? It's been a whirlwind. Honestly, from the point that uh, I walked out of the NFL and decided to – pursue coaching uh it was a desire of mine and then definitely my wife pushed me towards it she didn't want me at home 
<laughs> um, but it's been such a cool experience. Like right out the gate, I was able to get on the Central Michigan. The head coach John Bonamigo was my special teams coordinator when I played for the Lions. I uh, knew I wanted to get into coaching. Knew I had a mind for it. Brought me on there as the defensive line GA or QC. Uh, that year ended. I got on last year at Vanderbilt. Same kind of situation. Uh, Devin Fitzsimmons, the special teams coordinator at Vanderbilt, was the assistant special teams coordinator with the Lions. Same thing. Knew the kind of mind I had and desire that I had. So he brought me on last year to special teams, QC. But sure enough, after the season, with, you know, Coach Foster deciding to finally hang up the whistle and Coach Fuente uh, deciding to hand the keys to the car off to, to Jay Ham, Justin Hamilton, things just kind of matured fast and my name got thrown in there from Justin Hampton. Coach Fuente loved it from the kind of experience uh, and reputation that I left at Virginia Tech and the people that he's talked to that have been around me and the opportunity presented itself. So it's been an unreal experience, like something I never thought would happen. And if I'm talking to a lot of my mentors that have been in the coaching world, like this doesn't happen normally. Like you don't get an opportunity to coach, uh, have your own position group, three years after being removed from playing in the NFL. This is unreal. Like, it, it was always kind of a kind of an off-feeling working at Central Michigan and working at Vanderbilt. Love the schools, love how they build their program. Uh, but I couldn't really speak passionately about what the kids or young men would be getting into because I never was a part of that culture. Like, I could speak from the heart, and I think that gets across to not only the recruits, but their parents. Hokie Nation understands that for me, this is not a job. This is, this is, this is the job. This is, this is my, this is a, a dream come true. Like I, I can't even really put it in words. Like the joy and the pride that I have come back with Virginia Tech, and like I said, have that desire and that passion not to let Hokie Nation down. Like there's not going to be any shortcuts here between myself and Justin Hamilton and, and Jack Tyler and Pearson Prelo. Like this is home. Like, we can't come back home and put our all into it. We need to get out the business. All right, let's close with this one. Uh, I know you've got your video series, and I'm sure we're due for a new installment here at some point. But while we got you, just uh, give us your best DTAP Virginia Tech recruiting pitch. Mm. Okay. So I might get into it, but like, what's up, buddy? What's going on? I'm going to give you the short spiel, and then we're going to get to you. So, all right, I'm Coach DTAP. Coach Daryl Tap played here at Virginia Tech. Uh, 02 to 05, graduated in three and a half years in marketing, uh, all ACC, all American, fortunate to be drafted in the NFL, uh, get my 12 years in, I played from 06 to 2017. I was able to be fortunate and good with my money. Uh, so this is something that I truly want to do. I had a, such a great experience playing that I want to continue to give back to the game. So that's how I got into coaching. Went to Central Michigan, went to Vanderbilt last year, got the call this year in December to come home. Had to jump on it. All right, let's get into you, man. Where you're from, what you're doing, great point average, friends, family, you got pets. Like, let's go. Let, put me on so I can understand you. I want to continue a big relationship. Let's move this thing forward because based off the film, you have a lot of talent that would be useful here at Tech, but that's only half the battle. Like, you want to make into a young man that your family, your community is proud of. Like I said, your significant other that you're going to marry one day or be involved with one day, I want to help you make you into the best man that you can be for them because it's bigger than football. I believe it. I'm true. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in it. Play the tech, student the tech, graduate from tech. My kids love tech. My parents love tech. Like, it's a truly special place when you get to leave and you're trying to find a way to get back. So let's talk, man. Let's chop it up. Oh, that was good stuff right there. That was good stuff. Hell, yeah, that, that was money right there. <laughs> this is awesome, man. Good, good hanging out with you. Can't wait to get back to Blacksburg. In the meantime, stay safe, buddy. Yes, sir. You too. Thanks for having me. Got one, got one. <laughs>